ultimate weapon and promised to maximize the big man's impact for the Los Angeles Lakers this season. Here's Mr. Triple Double himself. One of a kind of nobody like him that can do everything that he is. Uh, my job is to make sure I continue to push him each day. Uh, he's practicing his games where he can be uh, at the top of his game each and every night. Uh, you know, he, he's, he, he's been in this league a long time, so he understands how to play the game. He knows uh, what he needs to turn up. And I, I know now he wants to turn it up, so it's my job to make sure that, um, that that's up every single night. All right, starting with you. Now we're talking some basketball. Now we're talking the love. fun stuff. Yes, that which we all love. Who should Westbrook be pushing more? Is it Anthony Davis or is it Westbrook? I think he can do both. I don't, I don't know why. Look, Russell Westbrook is the ultimate competitor. By the way, Russell Westbrook did call Anthony Davis the ultimate weapon, Stephen A. Mm -hmm. Right? And let's talk about what happened to AD last year. Missed 36 games due to injuries. But I want, I want, to, I want you to know something about AD. AD has a talent to be one of the best to ever do it. Yes. But last year, career low in rebounds, fewest blocks, field goal percentage, and free throw line percentage. 21.8 points per game marked his lowest scoring average since his second year in the league. Yep. So if there's a reason why you're bringing Russ over to this team, yes, because of his pace, because of his aggression in which he can play, mm -hmm. but also because of that mentality. And now what LeBron James has in his back pocket, instead of LeBron James always having to be that cop to try to push AD mm -hmm. or when he's not around to get AD to see the bigger picture, now you have guys like Russell Westbrook. Now you guys have like Rondo. I'm not taking any accountability away from Russell Westbrook for Russell Westbrook because he does have accountability for that. But I like the leadership and that mentality he brings to this team. I have no problem with it, but I think, you know, but and I think that Russell Westbrook is a plus, not a minus. And I applaud his mentality. I love his fire. Y'all know that. What I would tell you is that the focus right now has to be on Anthony Davis in this regard. Russell Westbrook talked about it. And maybe it was because it was a question thrown to him by the media. And we understand that. Anthony Davis has literally had about 50 injuries in his career. 50. Anthony Davis has missed about 155 games in his career. Where I stand is that somewhere along the line, when Russell Westbrook talks about him turning it up, Anthony Davis had to acknowledge that's something you didn't do in the past. And that's where we get to Anthony Davis. What possible excuse could you have? You, what did I say last year? When I was concerned about the Lakers, they were walking around town because, as you know, I, I do get to L.A. quite often, these, quite days. often these days. Okay, I get we, to, we I, know. I, I You're yes. bi-coastal. I, I do, I do You're get crazy. To LA. We know. I do get to L.A. Everyone, Stephen A. has multiple homes. We know. Saying, no, no, no. I'm just saying, nice. I, I'm saying, I ain't going all that. I'm just telling you I frequent L.A. Oh, yeah. And I love it. I mean, I, I play the song I love L.A. every morning. I mean, I just oh, do. Geez. Okay, here's the deal. You won the title. What were you doing in the offseason? Mm -hmm. You see, at moments like this, as critical as we can be of LeBron James from time to time, this is when we need to step back and pay homage to LeBron. This is why he's on the Mount Rushmore, to the Kobe's, to the MJ's or whatever. They're the marquee. They're the headline. And there's an innate internal responsibility that they feel to answer the call. So it's not just about my ability. It's about making sure that I'm in shape. It's about making sure that I maximize my potential mm -hmm. and that I'm ready for all comers as an individual because everyone's looking at me. And my response to that is, how could you have a teammate like LeBron that just helped deliver you your first title ever. And I'm not insulting Anthony Davis. I'm asking a question because it was something, it's something that I would ask him to his face. If you didn't do all you could physically to have yourself in peak condition, how could you allow that to happen to you when you know you're playing with a champion? You're playing with a guy that the bullseye is perpetually on his back. How could you have that slippage? And so it's great that Russell Westbrook is there. Russell Westbrook's chasing the ring, too, now. But we've never looked at Russell Westbrook and said durability's an issue, conditioning's an issue. Only time we ever questioned Russell Westbrook's conditioning in his career is when the brother came down with COVID. I agree That's with you. It. I say I agree with you to an extent. Okay. But I do want to provide you some cover on this. Please. The last two seasons have been condensed seasons, and they've been quick turnarounds. Okay. 
So for AD's body, I hear what you're saying. Right. Some of the things that I've heard about training and yes. taking that seriously in the right. offseason, putting on that flexibility, that weight, uh, body muscle-wise. But there is something to be said about playing the amount of games they played in those condensed times mm -hmm. and the time they've had off in between. You know what? And I'll throw this back at you. I know LeBron is a freak of nature. Yeah. But I would be pretty embarrassed if a dude that is older than me is consistently, consistently, consistently in better shape than me when we have the same profession. That would bother me. Well, and, that's luck, though, Stephen A. Too, now. Again, I'm not talking – injuries happen. I'm talking about conditioning. I'm talking about – you roll up in and you ready. Last year, you know he wasn't. You covered the NBA. You know I, he wasn't ready at the start. And that's on him. And I love Anthony Davis. Love Anthony Davis. He's one. I think Anthony Davis has the potential to be. He is one of the all-time greats. He truly is. And he's a great player, great guy. All I'm trying to say is that you got to know when LeBron James is your teammate, that brother is likely going to need you as the season wanes, because he's expecting to go deep in the playoffs. you got to be ready, man. you got to be ready. And last year, a few Lakers were not ready. ready. Agreed. I agree with you And on that. that is inexcusable when LeBron James is your teammate, because if nothing else, physically, that brother is going to be ready. Was an all-time high in injuries last season for a lot okay. of players. That's all. Okay. I hear what yeah. you're saying. Okay. I'm not talking about this last season. No. And LeBron, you're and LeBron time. talks okay. about that, too, the short offseason. Mm -hmm. You're 100% right. Uh, Warriors at Lakers, October 19th, this time with Clay Thompson. Yeah. And obviously, yeah. oh, Russ will be on the yeah. court. Can't wait. Lakers' second best odds mm -hmm. to win the title behind the Brooklyn Nets. Up ahead That's on. Right. Uh, Hey, Russell, hey, how man, are you? Jumping going to Jim Hill right here. Hey, what's up, baby? Good how to you see doing, you again. Man? Good, good. Yeah. Right? How does it make you feel when you hear LeBron, and we was talking a little while ago about, he was saying, we want Russell to be Russell. We want him to yeah. do what he does. We want him to just carry the load here. That's, that's a heck of a compliment coming from someone of his stature. Yeah, man, and you know, it's, uh, um, you know, when you, you come to a team and you come to a new team and guys welcome you with open arms, um, you know, to me, I, I just take it as a, uh, a sense of I know I have a job. I know I have to go out and compete. But alongside, I'm going to make sure that I take that and make sure I make those guys better. So my job is to make sure uh, I uplift Brian, AD, make sure those guys are competing at the highest level um, and making sure I make my teammates around me better. Because listening to your teammates talk, they're talking about them coming up to your level of as far as excitement is concerned yeah. and, and getting the ball up the floor. Yeah, uh, you know, that's what I bring to the table. It's one of my things I take pride in and making sure that each and every night I bring the energy and effort and the, the speed and the pace. Um, and alongside that, I'll make sure I can continue to bring those guys along um, and help them along the way. Hey, Russ, Mike Trudell with the Lakers and Spectrum Sportsnet. LeBron said that since you signed, you've in some ways been attached to the hip. And I just wondered what it's been like building that connection for somebody you played against for a lot of years and, and with on Team USA, but just what you've learned about each other over these last couple of months. Um, you know, it's been great. You know, like I, like I said, when you come to a new place, and obviously me and Brian's been friends uh, before I came here, but been actually being on the same team and understanding his work ethic, understanding mine, understanding the preparation, understanding how bad he wants to win and the things he's able to do to prepare himself um, allows me to see a different side of him um, where we connected. Um, I think it's good because we both understand and, and, and know what it takes to be able to win. But obviously, Brian understands what it takes to get to that next level. Um, and I'm able to kind of learn and understand some things from him along the way. And I've been able to do that. Hey, Russ. Dan White here with the Los Angeles Times. Um, whenever great players come together, the word fit gets thrown around all the time. Um, what have you learned in your experiences playing with great players? You've done it at every stop in your career. Uh, ab about sort of that, that notion of fit and, and what do you think makes it makes makes it work I guess um, I honestly don't pay much mind to it to be honest uh, because um, the game I always tell you kind of what to do I always believe throughout the season uh, it's not going to be it's going to be ups and downs there may be times where it look like it may not work there may be times where it's clicking on all cylinders um, and as a team you got to understand that and I understand that but being with multiple players and on different teams and understanding that it's going to be a process. Uh, my job is to make sure that I continue to just make those guys better. That's all I really want to do is to make sure that uh, whether, you know, 
they are the most comfortable in their own skin and they're playing at, at their best. Um, you know, AD and Bron and the rest of the guys are playing at the highest level they can play at, and I want to make sure I can uplift them and use my abilities to better make those guys better. Hey, Russ, uh, Gerard Moncure, Fox 11. Uh, I'm just curious about the journey that you've had in the NBA and in where you're sitting right now at this moment, and if you ever had any, what were your thoughts about ever playing for the Lakers and coming home? Um, you know, there's always been conversations about me coming home for, for every summer, damn near, uh, and I never really thought it would actually kind of pull through until obviously now. Uh, so be able to sit here and, and talking to you guys and being this like a uniform is um, just a, a blessing just for me um, and my family and my, my loved ones and the people here that support me, uh, especially being from L.A. and uh, being able to kind of I'll be back home, you know, finally. Um, it's just a blessing. I'm happy and super excited about it. Hey, Russ. Um, AD and, and Frank were just talking to us about him playing more center this season. And, and I'm curious, what, what does AD at the five do for you guys offensively in terms of just the spacing and the driving lanes? Um, I mean, it's, 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 it can be deadly because AD is obviously uh, one of the best players in the world. Um, he can play inside. He can shoot it. Can kind of pretty much do everything. Uh, and him at the five, you never know, um, you know, where he's going to be. He can roll, he can pop, he can space the floor, um, and that creates an advantage for us, you know, each and every night. Because um, I don't really know if there, there's nobody in the world that can guard him um, at the five or the four. It doesn't really matter. But uh, him at the five really uh, gives us an advantage, I believe. Hey, Russ, Kyle Goon, um, just. This being in this building, wearing this jersey, are there sort of steps here in the last you know couple of weeks, couple of months that have just made this dream that you had of, of coming home, playing for the Lakers, feel more real? Um, slowly but surely, yeah. You know, each and every day, being able to just have access to to Lakers facility to me is um, I don't take for granted. I don't take any opportunity to be able to uh, you know have a job, being able to have somewhere to be able to, to go to work, um, especially even more now than ever. I do not take anything for granted, especially being to play for the Lakers, being back home. Um, it's just a blessing and I, you know, cherish every morning. I'm going to make sure that I can continue to go out and, and play and, and do the best I can, um, you know, for the Lakers. Yeah, Russ, uh, Rob Polinka said you guys are going to be 100% vaccinated. How important is that to you personally? And what kind of message does that send to the rest of the league? Yeah, you know, I think everybody's decision and understanding uh, vaccinations there is kind of their own personal and decision. And, you know, whatever guys want to do, whatever they don't want to do. And obviously the Lakers and guys are committed to vaccination. I think it's, it's, it's good, you know, for us. Hey, Russ, what have you done from a training and diet standpoint that has helped your longevity and being healthy over the years? Sorry, I couldn't hear you, buddy. Sorry. Just trying to ask, what what have you done from a training and a diet standpoint that have, has helped your longevity and staying healthy over the years? Um, just um, taking care of my body, finding ways to be able to um, take time off. Rest is big for me because I know when I'm playing and and how I'm playing consistently on a night in night out basis is uh, it takes a lot of just out of me mentally. Um, you know, and the, the physical part will kind of take care of itself, but. I want to make sure that each and every day and every summer I kind of rest and take care of my body and understanding uh, how that you know impacts me uh, for the longevity of my career. Hey Russ, what um, what did you take away from the weekend you guys spent together in Vegas? Wayne said that you know probably the, the biggest stuff was off the court. You know what? In what ways maybe did this team come? To, this group come, come uh, together? You just get a chance to know guys, uh, know what they like, know what they don't like, and I, that's the best part about having a team and creating a brotherhood because you get a chance to uh, communicate about different things, not about basketball at all. Uh, get a chance to communicate about family, um, about things, you know, uh, philanthropy work, business side of things. You, have a, you get a chance to learn different things, and uh, especially with the group of guys we have here. I've been in the league a, a long time, know a lot of different people. Uh, we all know some of the same people, which is good to just converse about and, and talk about. Hey, Russ, Kurt Sandoval, ABC7. When you called Trevor Ariza, a lot of people might go, oh, two UCLA guys. Yeah. But what was it in your heart that said, I'm going to call him? Because he said, he goes, what are you calling me for? And, and why did you say, I'm calling him 
And can you share what that was oh, like? Oh, that, that's my dog, Trev. You know, we from L.A. That's one of my, you know, uh, one of the guys that, uh, being from L.A., that uh, made it to the NBA. It's guys that you can, you can look up to and be like, you know, he's from the same place I'm from. He's from L.A. And I've uh, been always having that connection, being back home. And then uh, I've been trying to get a chance to play with Trevor and been on the same team just because we uh, just connect on, on many different levels. And uh, the moment that... Um, he was free and I got traded here. Uh, he was my first call right away. And he knew I was serious because I called him immediately. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm, hey, get up out of here. Oh, thank you, appreciate it. Hey, you know, when I retire, I'm going on tour. <laughs> Good, how you doing? Good morning. Good morning. And good luck this year. And, you know, we're wondering what were your thoughts during the off season about remaining healthier than you've been for a while? Um, I don't feel comfortable missing that many games. You know, I've missed games in my career, but um, the Achilles missing 30, um, not being able to play at full strength in the playoffs against Phoenix, didn't play game five, um, and that didn't sit well with me. And so I, I made an emphasis on um, just taking care of my body and getting my body back to what it, to what it was as far as strength wise, um, you know, my first year here, and that's what I was my biggest focus on this summer. And with the moves that were made, what's what's going to be the big difference between the team this year and last year? Um, well, we have a, a lot of vets, you know, but we won't know until we we get started. Um, you know, we are a lot older, but uh, we got a lot more wisdom. Um, Guys know how to play, um, and not saying the guys didn't last year, but you know, with, with you know the veteran, you know veterans that we got, these guys been in the league for a long time, and so um, we can put a lot more complex stuff in, knowing that guys will understand it a lot quicker. Um, but we won't know the difference until you know we be able to step on the floor um, tomorrow for for camp, and then you know a couple of preseason games to see where we are and what we can what we can do to be successful this year. What's up, Kyle? Um, you know, there was a report that uh, when you and LeBron were talking to Russ about coming here, that you were talking about potentially playing more center. What is your expectation for playing center compared to maybe what you played in previous seasons for this team? Yeah, um, that was the expectation. Um, and that was discussed. And I expect to play center. I'm not sure, you know. What's going to happen? Me and Frank talked about it a couple of times, um, and that's the plan. Um, right now, nothing is set in stone, but uh, we want to see what that looks like, and I'm comfortable with that. Um, obviously, there's times you know where Dwight or DJ, you know, might get the start at center depending on games, but um, for the most part, I think the plan um, is to go with me playing center. Hey, D. Hey, D, what's up, man? What's up? Good to Everybody, see you. Everybody, what's up? So we can just get started. <laughs> I like that I was the I know, I'm by sorry. The way. I appreciate you just, that. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> Good looking out. Um, specifically about Russ, uh, what excites you about having him as a teammate? Um, and, and how do you think he'll fit with yourself and LeBron? Um, his energy, his pace. Um, you know, you watch how he gets down the floor. And it kind of was kind of the same thing when we had those a couple of years ago. You know, you get the ball and we we pushing. Um, and the same thing with Russ. Like you, you have to run, you know, because he's running. And so we don't want him to be the only one that's running the floor and pushing the ball. So um, for me, I'm very excited just, you know, running the floor with him, you know, elite passer, as we all know, um, elite lob passer, um, catching a couple of lobs from him. But um, I think his energy, his, his motor, that he always plays with and always brings to every game. Um, it's something that's going to propel all of us to, you know, play like that for 82. Because um, he, he, there's not one game where he doesn't have that energy and that motor. Um, and we can feed off of that. If we know a guy's going to bring it every every night, um, you know, to be just to be honest, you know, every night guys are going to start getting to you. game 60, game 50, you like, all right, I need a day. Um, but when you have a guy like that that's bringing that energy and that motor, it, it, it gets you going. Hey, D. Um, what was the rehab process like during the off season, and how does your body feel right now? 
Uh, body feel great. Um, it's a lot of just weight strengthening. You know, getting the Achilles back right. Uh, the Achilles was actually fine come towards playoff time, but it was uh, then it was the groin um, and the knee. Um, so that was the main focus this summer. Um, just basically starting from scratch and, and just building my body back up to um, where I'm comfortable again. And um, I feel like I got to that point. AD, last year you had shared with us that um, you had gotten vaccinated when that became available to the team. Um, curious what your reaction has been to some of the, the, the comments from players around the league who haven't yet gotten vaccinated. And then what do you think it means for this team? Rob sh said last week you guys are on pace or will be 100% vaccinated as a team by opening day or opening night. What do you think that means to you and this team? Um, I'm not sure what some of the other players um, have said. Um, but at the end of the day, my opinion on it is that every man in this league is a grown man to have their opinion to do what they want to do. Um, for us as a team, you know, we, we focus on ourselves and what we can do as an organization. And, um, you know, we, I think everybody on the team is vaccinated, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and, we, you know, we all have families. Um, you know, I personally did it for my family. You know, I have, at the time, I had one child, now I have two. Um, my parents was coming around. You know, I had people coming in and out of the house working and things like that. Uh, me traveling on the road, you know, I, I just wanted to make sure I was always protecting my family, and that's first and foremost, and myself, um, and everyone else around me. And I feel like everyone on the team feels the same way. Um, hence why I think, if I'm not mistaken, I think everyone on the team is, is vaccinated, um, or almost everyone. So, you know, I think that was the, that's the main focus for us, you know, making sure that our organization is doing everything we can to, to, to help the, the world, help the community, and do our part. Hey, D, first off, congratulations. With Thank, you. Thank um, you. Backtracking to uh, what you're talking about with the rehab, were there any things that you've done differently this off season um, as opposed to other years that you think that will maximize your chances of having a good clean bill of health this season? Oh, excuse me. Um, no, I think last last summer or last <laughs> mini summer, you know, we didn't. I didn't have that much time to get back on track from, you know, the bubble going into the next season. And uh, I think a lot of guys, and a lot of guys are on the league. That's why a lot of guys are getting hurt. But um, I had my full summer where I was able to, you know, 12 weeks, three months, four months of, of you know, training to get my body back to where it's supposed to be. Um, so I'm excited about that. But I think that was the biggest focus is just, you know, the, the season, you know, came a little too early. Um, and guys that had that proper training, especially guys that went to the bubble and went to, to a deep playoff run, guys that had that proper training to train their bodies like they normally do to prepare for a season. Um, and, you know, the Lakers in Miami only had, I think, 70 some days before game one, um, which is insane. So I think guys got that full summer, able to rehab and able to get their bodies back. So uh, I think all the guys on the team are, are healthy and ready to go. Yeah, AD, given where you're at in your career, do you feel a responsibility this year to make this more your team, to stay on the floor enough to make this, to become the leader of this team? Um, you know, I think I have the capability of doing so. Um, obviously, we got a lot of great talent on the team, a lot of great leaders, Bron, myself, Russ, um, Mel. And it, it takes a group um, for a leadership. You know, obviously, I know that the guys have talked to me about, you know, this is your team, um, and kind of the same thing that we did um, my first year here, um, but I think adding you know a couple guys it makes that job a lot easier. You know where um, it takes a lot of stress and a lot of load off of, off of one guy, where we can have four or five, six guys that can um, do what they have to do to win basketball games. And you know at the end of the day, we all have to sacrifice um, to be able to you know reach our common goal and that's win the championship. Ad, uh, you talked about the internal. Uh, motivation with the Achilles in the 30 games. Externally, there's a lot of gibber talk about how old this team is and will they break down. LeBron seems to be motivated by that. Are you motivated by that? Yes. Um, I think our entire organization is motivated motivated by that. Our team is motivated by that. Um, it's like people not counting us out because we're the Lakers. 
and our and who our team is, but they're counting us out because we're old. Um, and we see it, and it's fun, it's exciting. Um, that's why we're so excited to to get started. Um, and you know, everybody has touched on it all over social media. Mel has said some. Um, Russ Braun is the most vocal about it, but um, everyone is motivated to get started and show.